Hi everyone and welcome to your weekly horoscope for Monday the 3rd of February going through until Sunday the 9th of February 2020. Thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today as always. I'm going to give you a day-by-day -day rundown of what this upcoming week is going to be about. I've had a look at what the stars are doing to one another this week and they form certain energy when they uh, form relationships with one another and as above so below that energy affects us here on planet earth so this reading is for all signs of the zodiac it's for everyone who watches the energy applies to all of us it will just manifest itself in different ways depending on where you are also remember that i'm in the uk so my horoscopes are based on uk time and the key words that I got for this week really were spiritual strength, the truth, and speaking the truth, as well as personal breakthroughs. So it's a high power week. We've got um, the moon going through a lot of different signs this week. And we also have two major planets changing signs. First of all is Mercury, the communication planet going into Pisces. A water sign so mercury finds it much harder to communicate on a face-to-face -face level mercury rules gemini the communication sign and virgo also absorbing information breaking it down and making sense of it and in pisces it's in the sign of spirit spirituality creativity intuition so in terms of your thinking it now becomes much more emotional than it ever has been. And we have another big shift later on in the week when Venus, the planet of love and beauty, goes into Aries. And Venus does that on Friday the 7th and Mercury moves into Pisces on Monday the 3rd. So Venus is the planet of love and sex and beauty and desire and romance. In Aries, it's ruled by the planet of Mars, aggression, masculinity, overcoming obstacles, being self-starting, having innovation. And Venus and Aries are sometimes a bit much. So what you have to be aware of here is that you're spiritually strong to begin with, but there's the potential for you to go overboard. And later on in the week when things go into Aries, you can make real breakthroughs. So Let's have a look at Monday the 3rd. The moon goes into Gemini at 11.30 in the morning, so that's positive. The moon is how you feel. Gemini is upbeat, it's a doorway. It's about communication, it's about cracking jokes, being witty, uh, having fun with people, in a sense where you're having fun together, not at someone's expense. You're enjoying each other's company and you are learning new things and traveling and going on little adventures. That's the kind of thing Gemini likes. Mercury does go into Pisces, so Pisces is ruled by Neptune, the planet of water and love for humanity and psychic ability. So with your Mercury, the planet of the way you think, being in this sign, you're able to tune into these radio frequencies that are kind of spiritual, which you haven't been able to tune into before. So if you're someone who isn't interested, then don't bother, obviously. And then I don't know why you're watching this video. But if you are someone who is interested in tapping into that spiritual stuff and you haven't done so before, Monday is really a good time to do it. Because Mercury goes retrograde later on in the month, remember, on the 16th. So the first two weeks here of February are a really good time to think. Venus is in Pisces at the beginning of the week here on Monday the 3rd and in sextiles it forms a harmonious relationship with Saturn and Capricorn. So on Monday the 3rd you start the week off with feeling totally connected spiritually. The shift of Mercury into the sign of Pisces allows you to dream and to plan ahead. You're also hugely intuitive and creative on this day so make sure you use that. There's an ease in which you can communicate with the unmanifest, with the intangible. 
So your spiritual strength, really, you're able to access your spiritual strength. And if you listening to this right now, uh, immediately thinking, oh, this guy is so vague and abstract. Can he not just tell me about Monday, I'm going to get a new job. Tuesday, I'm going to fall in love. Love. No, I am not like that. What I'm telling you is that there's the potential for you to become more open minded to abstract ways of thinking, dreaming, looking at the future potentially, because when it is that you become willing to do that, to entertain things in your mind's eye before you actually go out and do them. So thinking before you rush out and do things, it gives you an opportunity to manifest the life you want. So your spiritual strength today, you're able to access it because you're willing to really receive energy and to communicate with energy in a way that you usually can't because either you're disinterested in it or it feels uncomfortable and weird and you don't know what you're doing. So if you're praying or meditating or going to Shakti dance and you're like, all these people are saying I'm supposed to have like this oh, amazing angel singing and all I want is a cigarette, then you get what I'm talking about. That's the kind of block. It's like, well, the angels may speak to you, love, but they don't speak to me. So if you're in that situation, the problem isn't the angels. It's the problem that there's something obscuring your connection with them. And Monday is the kind of breakthrough day where you're so spiritual that if you just let yourself sink into the spirituality and you let yourself dream and plan ahead, you'll notice that you're suddenly connected to all of these people that you've been trying to connect to. So it's through, again, in AA they say faith without works is dead. So you have to take the faith, the energy, the guidance of your higher self, and you have to do the legwork. You have to put it in practice so that it does work. It's like knowledge is power. Yeah, great. Knowledge is power if you do something with it, otherwise it's not. <laughs> if you just put it at the bottom of the cabinet and no one ever knows about it, it's not power. Tuesday the 4th of February, we have the Gemini moon opposing Mars in Sagittarius. So the moon wanting adventures and to be, um, to have a good time, to enjoy itself, to learn and to explore. That doesn't want anything to do with the red planet of masculinity in Sagittarius, which is saying, let's go gallop away and run. It squares Neptune and Pisces, so it's like, eh, I don't want to go into the spiritual thing so much today. And it trines the sun, so it forms a harmonious relationship with the sun in Aquarius. The sun is the luminary in our solar system. It's our solar plexus, as above, so below. And it's the center of our solar system and it's the center of our spiritual physical system here. So on Tuesday the 4th, don't go anywhere new <laughs> or talk some complex philosophical rubbish. You're going to be thinking along those lines. It's I don't want to hear about the big trip out there and what I need to do. And I don't want to hear about your abstract notions of how you perceive the universe. I'd rather just have a chat. That's what you're going to be feeling on Tuesday. And rather than sitting somewhere and listening to someone drone on and on and on, which is potentially something that can happen to you on Tuesday, instead you can use Tuesday's energy to work with other people as a group towards some sort of common positive goal. So if you're in a club or if you're an activist, if you have any say over the schedule or if you want to decide when the best day is to make a stand or to call the press and to have the interviews, Tuesday the 4th is a good day to make a breakthrough in that sense in terms of a personal goal which has a vested interest, other people are also interested in this thing you're trying to achieve. If you take action on that as a group today, you're very likely to succeed. On Wednesday, the 5th of February, the moon goes into Cancer at four minutes past seven in the evening. So immediately there's a big shift. The moon in Gemini is let's talk and let's have adventures and let's educate ourselves a bit and find 
other ways of seeing the world and other ways of doing things. The moon in Cancer is much more about the domestic sphere and looking within and saying home is in the kitchen and I nurture people and I love people and I want them all around me and I don't want to hug them and squeeze them and I want a happy family life. So Cancer is often selfless because it puts other people's needs ahead of its own. Mercury, the way you think, is in the water sign of Pisces and it forms a harmonious sex star with Uranus, the planet of the miraculous and unexpected and chaotic and energetic in Taurus, so in a physical sense. So that's magic. The way you think and dream is connected to the miracle planet in an earth sign so the miracles can come true. The Cancer Moon also sex styles forms a harmonious relationship with Uranus and Taurus. So the Moon is in water and it's also in on it. So you think a certain way, you're very comfortable with the way you think. The Moon then squares Chiron and Aries. So it doesn't like the wounded healer so much. It's like you stay over there and it trines Mercury and Pisces. So let's connect with this watery energy and let's think about things in a spiritual, intuitive, creative way and see how we can make the most of that. But on Wednesday the 5th, you may see things too positively because there's a little bit too much water here. And you may be so idealistic and you may feel so loving and nurturing towards other people that you become a target for other people who want to take advantage of you or who will see that you are so loving and kind. They'll see, oh, he's a pushover. I'll just lie to him. He's such a loving person. He'll never notice any work and screw him over. That kind of energy. So also, you, yourself, Make sure you double check anything new that you're signing or that you're committing yourself to because you could be conned on this day. And also on the other side of the coin, if you're the person doing the lying and the conning, make sure that on Wednesday you only speak the truth. If you lie, you will get caught out and you will be held responsible on Wednesday. What we put out is what we get back. The Wiccans are really very, very clever with this because they say what you put out there returns to you threefold and that is very true. So if you lie to other people, sometimes you'll get away with it, sometimes you won't. But, I mean in a physical sense, like people trapping you or uh, catching you in an actual outright lie as you're telling it. But you never get away with it on a spiritual level because on a spiritual level you know that you've lied and you will always get that back in some sort of untruth or someone letting you down or someone pretending to be your friend and stabbing you back. You'll get that return to you. Liars are friends with liars. People who like to gossip are friends with people who like to gossip. So. First of all, make sure if you're on the one side and you're just full of love and I just want to help everyone, make sure that, you know, things are reasonable and they make sense and that you're not going totally overboard and that you also check in on your own life. And if you're selling or if you're trying to convince other people to do certain things, if you're trying to influence other people, really, really make sure that you are very, you do everything by the book. You follow the rules and you make sure everything is above board. Because if you do something today, the guy, your supervisor will see that it's not written in the book and you will get caught on Wednesday. It's really likely. Moving on to Thursday, the 6th of February. We have the moon still in Cancer and now it trines. It forms a harmonious relationship with Neptune the higher octave of Venus, love. So it's love for humanity and the human family. Also in Pisces, so it's like water, water, water. It's like the angels are singing. It's like the muses are whispering in my ears. I live in Fantasia. It's beautiful. The Cancer Moon quincuxes the sun in Aquarius. 
So the sun in Aquarius is, I want to be a humanitarian, I want to go to the United Nations, and I want to bring back together the human family, and finally get people to see that we're the same, we're all the same. That is really what I'm hoping for in 2021, that the big awakening is that we all realize we're not different. And I hope that all of this, you know, in the tens, 2010s, that all this division and all of this divisiveness, that we have a backlash to it in the sense that we all realize, hey, hang on a minute, whether you're American or German or Italian or French or Japanese, we are all the same. It's just the illusion of cultural difference. And these days we really can't say, uh, it's impossible to translate. I can't have any contact with this person. That's what the sun in Aquarius says. It says that you want to be a humanitarian. On the other side, you're living in this fantasy bubble still. The Cancer moon opposes Jupiter in Capricorn. So Jupiter is the lucky planet saying work, work, work. You'll get w luck when you work. But on Thursday, the sense I feel, because it is so much about nurture and love, this is the day for people who cannot do things for themselves on their own anymore. And you need some help in your area, in the area of your life, in some area of your life. And you need to ask for help. So if you're addicted to drugs and you've tried to get off them and you just can't do it, and you really want to, and you realize that you can't do it without help, but you despise asking for help, Thursday the 6th, you're going to love yourself so much that you're going to say, you know what, even though I have to now be truthful and open about this and ask for help, that is the most loving thing to do for myself because I know this addiction, for example, will kill me and asking for help is necessary. Also, someone who is, you know, used to living a certain way and the kids are used to you being the parents a certain way, but, you know, you've got older and your mobility has decreased and no one seems to acknowledge that. And you're always left behind and you could actually say, help, family. You're not aware that you're always leaving me behind. I'm struggling with this thing to begin with. I would like some help, please. If you're someone who struggles asking for help, and that's most of us, because most of us are trained, the men and the women, I think, is to... Like, for me, it was in German, Indiana kennt kein Schmerz. So, um, tough little boys don't know what pain is. Uh, for w women, also, it's, you know, it's about, it's about continuing on and, you know, being resilient and overcoming adversity. So, we feel that when we have to reach out to other people, we're admitting that we're weak or that we need some support. And that's a no-no. It isn't a no-no. We all need help at some point in our lives. And today, if you have this huge pride that you just can't swallow to ask for help, then please try today. You'll have great success. If you have everything under control, emotionally or in terms of your physical health or body or your spiritual strength and everything is hunky-dory, throw yourself into work today it will really surprise you positively, your career, the work that you love to do. On Friday the 7th of February, the moon goes into Leo, another fire sign, at 10.46 in the evening. So the moon in Leo, we're building up to the full moon now. That happens on Sunday. So the moon in Leo is confidence and fun and love. And yeah, love in a, in a way that's pure, like soulmate and having fun and being silly, that kind of love, and being together and just loving the outward bound, abseiling activity that you're all doing together as a family. You know, it's, it's fun. Or being up on stage and, and making a big spectacle of yourself and enjoying the adulation you get from the audience. The moon in Leo enables you to stand in the spotlight, to present yourself positively, to have a little bit of fun to see life as, you know, I can do things and not just as this, I am walking towards death. 
It's not that. It's, you know, I can rollerblade and I can go to Miami and I can um, go to the beach and have fun and enjoy my life. That's what the moon is in Leo. Venus is in Aries or Venus enters in Aries on Friday, which is what I mentioned earlier in the week. So the love planet in Aries is really, it's miss. It doesn't like being in Aries because Aries misunderstands the energy of Venus. Aries only knows I am at A, position A, and I want to get to position B. Anything in my way is just rubbish that I need to get out of my way so I can get to B. So it's I want to get love. And that's not how love works. You can't shop for love and get love. Love is something that you feel for yourself, that you exude, and that another person is drawn in by. Someone who falls in love with you isn't forced to fall in love with you. They do it of their own free will because they like what they feel and hear and see. And that's how you fall in love. And Venus in Aries is going to say, go push it, make him come on the date with you, even though he doesn't want to. And if you're doing that, you're just shooting yourself in the foot because you're just going to create more division between you and your partner. The Leo moon also squares Uranus and Taurus, so friction with the physical world and the unpredictability of it. It trines the wounded healer Chiron and the planet of love and beauty. Venus in Aries. So it's fire, fire, fire. Venus is not comfortable at all. Remember, even though Mercury doesn't make great connections on this day, remember that Mercury is still in Pisces. So you're, while Venus is being really pushy and saying push for love, and the moon is in Leo saying be on stage, go for job interviews and just tell them you are so honored to have me here today. Aren't you lucky? That is really, oh, that's the permeating energy of the day. And anyone who has low self-esteem or who struggles, Friday is your day, okay, to go and to say, this is my CV, uh-huh, yes. I excelled as a personal assistant for those three years. And then I took 10 years off as a parent and I was an amazing mother. My child is the best in the universe. And now I'm getting back into the workforce and I am smarter than ever. I am quicker than ever. I am more experienced. You know, it kind of, rather than saying, oh yeah, you know, I've been out of the workforce and I'm trying to get back into it and I'm just trying to get any kind of job. No, you're saying, this is my time to shine. It's a to totally different attitude and it gets you in a totally different place. So, your love and your desire, which you're very much in touch with via this Mercury and Pisces bubble, is so powerful that it's really easy to fall into a relationship disaster on this day. Romantic relationship disaster. The energy is best used in sports competitions, physical movement and movement therapy, yoga, dancing, all of those things will give you a sense of power and control and the relationship and the fantasy is an illusion that is not going to serve you. That's going to make you feel disempowered and confused. So Venus in Aries is almost like bursting your bubble by saying, yeah, oh, you want someone so badly? Fine. You asked for a sailor. Let's bring you a sailor. And then the sailor comes in and he's got um, addiction issues. He has been married 12 times um, and he's 68. You're 25 and you wanted to manifest this wonderful sailor man. But the universe bursts your bubble with that today and gives you a potential relationship that is that can turn into a disaster. So really, new relationships on Friday, look out for them in the sense that, of course, you can't just live your life via astrology and the potential. Meet new people, connect, but keep your eye and ears open because if you find yourself suddenly, unexpectedly, 
suddenly falling in love magically on Friday the 7th with someone you've known for 20 minutes, then really say, okay, hang on a minute, let's not do anything drastic here, this may be wrong, because it is an illusion here. The best way to use that excessive energy that immediately makes you like excessively fall in love, it's like single white female this, this is like Glenn Close in Fatal Attraction, it's like, I can't live without you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And no one, like, when you come at someone like that, it's like, oh my goodness, they're gonna <gasps> suck me dry, I can't, no. So, instead of pushing that and saying, I want you, I love you, <laughs> push that into something that gives you joy. So, physical movement, energy, and create movement and passion and fire in a physical sense or in a creative sense where you're really getting everything thrown in the air and you're throwing paint around and the ideas are flowing and you're on stage and you're singing and you're performing. It's about get, using the fire you have within you and using that power of control rather than giving it to someone else and saying, oh, you're, you're what I need, otherwise I can't exist. It's a silly trap that we've all fallen into and it's one of the ways the ego tries to control us. You know what, uh, um, speaking of weird things, I had a weird thing happen. I uploaded, this is like a conspiracy, I uploaded a video for the full moon in Leo, which happens on the 9th of February. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But within 15 hours of uploading it, there were 30,000 views on it, which is insane for my channel. And then I looked the next day and there were 60,000 views on it. And I've been looking every day since, and it's had the usual amount of views, like 200, 300, couple. So it's gone up to 61,000, 62,000, 63,000. But it seemed very odd. It was like, where did these 30,000 co people come from? And where did these 30,000 people come from? And why did so many people subscribe and then loads of them unsubscribe? It was very weird. It's a weird thing that's like, I don't know exactly what that is. And on Friday, don't try and figure things like that out. Instead, focus on what you can do in the here and now to be productive instead of musing on these mysteries. On Saturday the 8th of February, the moon is in Leo. It opposes the sun in Aquarius. So the moon makes you feel good about yourself and it makes you interested in having fun and meeting your own needs and saying, let me go to Disneyland. The Sun in Aquarius says, use your power to be of service to other people. So you're slightly conflicted. The Leo moon forms a quincux, so a harmonious positive relationship with Mercury, the communication planet, Neptune, the planet of love and dreams for humanity and for everyone on Earth, both of which are in Pisces. So you'll be very, very selfless. And Jupiter in Capricorn. So on one hand, you want to make yourself this, maximize your potential, but on the other hand, you're thinking about other people and how you can use your energy and skill to work to make their lives better. So we're building up to the full moon on Saturday the 8th. The energy comes together in a way that gives you direction to put energy into manifestation of your dreams in love, creativity, intuition, power, strength, career, and work, vocation, and pretty much any area of your life. So this is manifestation energy to the max. The energy that can be so destructive in a romantic sense, the way we saw it the day before on Friday the 7th, on Saturday the 8th can be used in an incredibly powerful way in helping you to break through in some aspect of your life that you haven't been able to break through before. You've been going to pubs and doing your stand-up routine, but you've never had the agent arrive and see you and offer you a show on BBC Radio 4. And on Saturday, if you do it, and instead of focusing on figuring out why she doesn't love me or why he doesn't love me, like Friday and Saturday, you have to be conscious of this because the energy is going to be confusing. They're going to, it's going to say, I feel so drawn towards that person. I should put all my energy in that. 
I'm telling you that is not going to flourish and that's not going to give you a positive outcome. What I'm saying is instead of focusing on someone else, you focus on you, how you can make it and that energy is going to flourish and it's going to give you a bunch of roses at the end. But you have to make a deliberate choice. All your friends are going out skiing, but you're going to stay in the shallow chalet and you're going to do your appointments with the people that you've got because that is talking about your career and what the next steps are. You'd rather be skiing, but you decide to look at your long-term future and that way you thrive and succeed. Finally, last day of the week, we have Sunday, the 9th of February. We have the full moon in Leo and this is the weird um, conspiracy theory X-Files video that I did for you guys. Um, have a look at that. It goes into a lot more detail about what the full moon in Leo is all about and what it does for you. It is so nice to have it at this time of year because in the northern hemisphere, January has been glum and dull. Well, we had some lovely days, but usually this time of year isn't the isn't known for its its <laughs> its amusement. <laughs> February is uh, pretty gray and bleak here today. So we need a full moon in Leo because Leo is the height of summer. And that's what we're getting internally during this full moon in Leo. Astrological, we're getting the heat of summer inside. And we're like, yes, excitement in the middle of February. I'm going to do this. I'm going to have so much fun. This is amazing. I'm amazing. So it really lights a fire inside of you in this time of year where you really don't expect it. You certainly don't get it from outside of you. You certainly don't look at the gray sky and say, oh, how inspiring. Maybe you do, but most people won't. <laughs> the moon moves into Virgo later that day at 11.40 at night. So just before midnight UK time. The Virgo moon is focused on making sense of information. It trines, so it's friends with, Love you, besties. With Uranus and Taurus, the planet of the miraculous and whatever can happen, can happen in a tangible way. And it quincuxes Venus and Aries, the planet of love and beauty, saying, I want you. Fall in love with me now. And Chiron and Aries, saying, if I go and get love, I will get hurt. So let me not do it. So, the first part of the day, the full moon in Leo, ta-da, you suddenly come out of your shell. It's like, you know, um, a performance on stage when uh, they have the warm-up and then the dancers come out and they, s they start to play one of the artist's biggest hit and then they come out of the stage and they, on this platform, they rise up higher and higher until they're in the center of the stage and you can see the big star and it's the reveal. That's how you feel. You feel like, oh, here I am in all my glory. And then later on in the day, the Virgo moon is going to say, okay, let's analyze how I make sense of it. So, Sunday the 9th, yesterday's energy continues. So, the ability to make any changes in your career or to get more power in your life or to focus on love or any dreams that you've got you still can do that but with the addition of the virgo moon think of it as having your own personal secretary now given to you at astrologically you're now sifting through information much faster and researching to get all the information together to make your dreams a reality in a physical practical sense make sure you do your homework before you take action Remember the communication planet Mercury does go into retrograde on the 16th of February this month. So we need to use these first 16 days of February to focus on detail and to look at the things that we want to commit to and where we want to make the breakthroughs. And that's why we have to make sure everything is above board and truthful because these are the ideas we now have and we have the spiritual strength to go and do these things and we want to sign up and we want to make sure the contract is all sorted and good and we want to make sure that the new lease on the house is all above board and there are no subtenants who have a right to live there before us all of that stuff 
This is the time for planning and for getting the details right, especially on Sunday the 9th. So the full moon shows you in all your glory on uh, Saturday and on Sunday you're like, how do I bottle this glory? How am I able to practically bottle this sense of, ah, I'm in the spotlight, a star is born. And, or I am finally made, made it with going to a job interview and I presented myself. Or if you're agoraphobic and I'm not making a joke here, it's I have left the house for the first time in three months and I didn't have a panic attack and I let other people see me and now I'm back in and I feel safe and I've made progress. So it's, a, it's an amazing week for breakthroughs. The only thing I would warn you about is underestimating your own spiritual strength because you're, you've got an A plus in that sector. And the only thing I want to warn you about is your relationship with the truth. It needs to be white, uh, lily white, pure as snow, okay? Don't lie. You won't, it will, you always get caught in it, always. Lying always catches up to you. Whether it catches up to you in a practical way, the way it's likely to catch up with you on Wednesday. Um, but like I said earlier, it always catches up to you in a spiritual sense because the spiritual laws are always at work, whether we know it or not, whether we believe in them or not. And they're always creating our future based on our choices. So if you lie, you create more lies in the future. That's what I get for you this week. I hope you have a glorious, glorious time. I think the 3rd of February to the 9th of February is going to be a time for a lot of you make it. And a lot of you break through. And we'll see in the news that someone new has made it. Or that some... And I mean, that happens every week. So it's no great insight. But it it's going to be more than usual that people just overcome the obstacles that they've been trying to overcome for years and suddenly finally they're able to jump that hurdle and get through it. So if you have been knocking your head against some sort of a wall for years, you may just be able to finally, I mean, first of all, I would advise you to stop knocking your head on a wall. It's not helpful. But if you have been doing that anyway, it's really likely that the breakthrough will happen this week. Have a glorious week. If you would like a personal reading with me, then please get in touch with me via my website. It's gregoryscott.com and you can order your reading with me there. I use astrology, tarot, numerology and my intuition in my personal readings. To draw up your astrology charts, I need your place of birth, date of birth and time of birth. Don't worry if you ever don't have the time of birth. There's a process called chart rectification where you send me 10 or more life events and I look at your chart on that day and with your life events I'm able to rectify the chart and work out when you were born and then I have a very accurate picture of the sky at the moment you were born and I can answer any questions you have. Any questions. Really. I mean any. So if you do have any questions or you'd like some guidance or someone to confirm that you're on the right track or if you're totally at a loss right now I'm available. Just get in touch with me via gregoryscott.com. If you like this video, then please share it online. That would be super helpful to me. Share it on all your social media platforms, on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter and on LinkedIn, wherever you're active. It would really, if like sharing the video for you may be like this little thing, but if you'd like me, <laughs> I'm getting all the people who don't like me now, I'm feeling them. But if you do like me and you want to do me a favor, seriously, um, then sharing this video with your friends, even if you have like five friends on Twitter or whatever, or on Facebook, it's really helpful because you're doing what advertising agencies used to do. You're really helping me exist and getting other people to know that I exist. And if you want more of these videos, then hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever something new is out. Like this weekly horoscope, the daily tower readings, the monthlies for February are out now. Hooray! Finally, I got the monthlies done and the yearlies are out for every sign of the zodiac. So have a look if you haven't checked yet. I hope you have a glorious week. Mwah! I'm sending you loads of love and lots of kisses. And I'll speak to you for the daily tower reading. And I'll speak to you here for the general weekly horoscope next week. All the best.